a bit. Sorry, guys. The um, stream kicked me out last minute. So, okay. I think I'm good now. All right. Let me adjust that. Can we see what's going on? Yes. Yes, we can. Okay. Cool. Whew, I can breathe now. <laughs> okay. Um, hi. Happy Thursday. My name is Alexis. As usual, I'm here on behalf of Pop Shop America, and I am going live tonight. I'm going to be showing you guys how to make these really cute uh, crepe paper flowers. So these little guys like this. And this is a um, two-part series of a uh, project that we have right now. So this is for the monthly uh, subscription adult box that we have on poptopamerica.com. And this is for making pajaki chandeliers. So pajaki chandeliers are this really cool um, traditionally Polish decoration. It looks like well, it looks like a chandelier, but it's made out of a sort of yarn usually with a mixture of wooden sticks. And what it's done is it's constructed and then there's decorations that are strung from it. So things like flowers, pom-pom balls, beads, uh, jewels, things of that sort. So that's what we're going to be making. And this is part one of that. So we're going to be doing the flowers tonight and hopefully you guys can hear and see me well. I had to rush here and get um, situated because again, like I mentioned, I was logged in and it kicked me out like last minute. So I was scrambling to make it on time, but I'm here. So happy Thursday. I hope everyone's having a great week. Uh, let's go ahead and kind of get situated, get started. So this is a really simple project to do. And a lot of you guys may have what you need already laying around the house. And even that you don't have it, um, when you do order the subscription box for this particular uh, craft, you are included everything you need in the package. So what I'm going to be using today are these crepe paper rolls. So I have three different colors here. And this kit does come in two different color schemes. The other one's going to be more of like a brown, not brown, more of blue and green sort of color look. But this one right here is yellow, this gold color, and then pink. So I think those are really pretty. That's the colors that I'm going to be working with today. And I'm going to be making um, the flowers like I mentioned. These, again, they're really simple to make. The only other tool that you'll need for tonight's project will be a hot glue gun. And then as well a pair of scissors and I have a pencil here on standby just to help construct the flowers that I'm making it makes it a little easier it's not completely necessary if you don't have like a pencil or a pen but I'm using one just to make it easier for myself so what um but that being said we'll go ahead and get started with kind of what we're doing here I have a few different options I have this one right here this is probably the more simple of them to make see if I can adjust this lighting so you guys can see. This is the more simple of the ones to make. I have this little guy right here and then I have like a rose one as well. So again these are really easy to make. Uh, they don't require a lot of materials and a lot of us have this sort of paper already laying around the house. So I'm gonna go in and with the pink one, you can do this with any color, by the way, too. It does not have to be any particular color, color that I'm using here. But I'm going to cut a strip about mm, maybe like two, two and a half inches, something like around this length. And I'm going to cut the strips. And what I'm going to do is just start rounding the corners like that. And these are very repetitive in steps. So I'm going to walk you guys through the first part of it and then it's going to be a breeze from then on out. It's going to be so easy to make. So I'm just taking this and rounding the corners of it like that to make it kind of like an oval shape. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, let's see if you can see that. Yeah, I'm going to take my pencil and I'm laying this down horizontally, taking the pencil in the middle of it and I'm going to roll it. And what this does, I'm going to roll that a couple times to kind of like really um, make that impression. And what this does is this helps give it an organic sort of like petal shape. And I'm just going to take that and kind of like press it down in the middle, turn it a bit. And I'm, since I'm making the center first, I'm going to take this right here and begin to roll it just slightly into itself. So that way I have this sort of center flower petal right here. And I don't know if my light's making it a little harder to see. Let's see. 
can change the settings. I feel like maybe that's a little easier. You guys can leave me comments too in the chat box if this lighting looks better than the other. But that's the first step of it. And sorry, I'm getting distracted with my light. <laughs> okay, so once you have this here, what you want to do is you want to take your glue gun and you want to glue that to itself in that first step right there. So I have mine on standby right here. And again, this project is really simple. You can definitely do this with your kids um, or by yourself. But if you are doing this with your kids, I'd recommend supervising them since we are working with hot glue. And, you know, it's it can burn a little bit if you get it on your fingers, especially if you, if you have a younger one working with you. So that's the first step of this first flower right here. And we're just going to repeat that. So pretty much I'm going to just pre-cut some strips. Again, I'm cutting those in like two, two and a half inch um, increments. And I'm going to end up rounding the corners of those. So while I cut these, I want to go ahead and... Uh, let you guys know as well. We do have a coupon code for tonight and that is active now. It's going to be active for the next 24 hours and that's going to be craft with Alex. And so that coupon code is going to get you 15% off anything on the um, Etsy page whenever you do browse Pop Shop America. So it does not have to be this particular kit you get. You can get one of the monthly um, coloring books because we have those two. You could get any of the other kits we have. We have soap making, candle making. Uh, we have ones like this we have cement uh, kits we have resin kits we have ink kits we have a bunch of different options watercolors acrylic based ones so there's a ton of elements to explore on the um, etsy, etsy page <laughs> sorry guys i can't talk tonight <laughs> um so there's a ton of elements to explore on the etsy page and you can get 15 percent off any of those on there so you don't have to do it for this kit, but if you want to join us for the second installment of this next week, then by all means, take advantage of the code, get save yourself 15%, and then you have everything you need to get started on that. So that's pretty cool. Um, just don't mind me. I'm waving my scissors around. So I have a bunch of these just like pre-cut and just to save myself some time. And I'm just, again, taking these and rounding the corners and they don't have to be the exact same length. It's okay if, you know, some of them are a little shorter, some of them are a little longer. Again, we're making flowers here, so we, we're kind of at an advantage of they don't have to look perfect. They can have that organic sort of flowy look to them. In fact, I think that makes them look a little more natural. If you have a flower laying around too, by all means, you can use that as reference and um, try to follow along with that as well. But this is pretty straightforward once we get past the whole part of actually building and constructing the petals so it's not too difficult to do and this one here is definitely going to be more like a rose the other two that i have uh one i guess this could be like a chrysanthemum and then this one is more it's like a baby rose but it could be anything it's a similar technique of as to what we're doing here so they're pretty pretty straightforward once you get the uh, the basic steps of them done. And again, this is just using the crepe paper, which you can you can find this um, at any store in the party section. Really, it's really inexpensive, and you can make some pretty cool uh, decorations with them, designs. And so these we're going to be hanging onto our uh, chandeliers next week whenever we make those. So that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, we do have some other classes coming up as well, too. We have, let me refer to my little calendar here. So next week, we're going to have the second installment of the um, chandeliers, which will incorporate these flowers that we're making tonight into those. And then the following week after that, we're going to be doing vision boards. So that's going to be really fun. If any of you are familiar with vision boards, those are pretty much just, it's essentially like it's a board obviously but it's um an inspirational board that you make and you personalize it with pictures quotes maybe uh goals that you have you know if you envision yourself in vacation next month in hawaii then, you know you put a picture of hawaii on it or something or if you see yourself uh you know killing your goals in the gym or getting that promotion at work you'll put something on it that's relevant to whatever it is that you're trying to manifest in your life. 
So that's what we have for the 20th of this month, April 20th. Uh, April 13th, we're going to have the second installment of what we're doing here tonight. So I'm not making these flowers for nothing. So they're going to go on the chandelier that I'm making next, uh, next Thursday. So that's going to be April 13th. 20th, we have those vision boards. And then on the 27th, we have our Relax and Color live stream. I know a lot of us um, are returning from previous streams. But for those of us who are new to the Pop Shop America lives that we do every Thursday, we do have a reoccurring one uh, every last Thursday of the month. That's going to be the Relax and Color streams. And with those, what we do is we just get whatever we're working on, if it's um, art supply or whatever art project we're working on. So coloring or if you have a painting you're doing or anything like that. We just pretty much get together. We go on live and then we just color. We focus on certain subjects you know so it may, it may be shading it may be um stippling it may be some some technique you know something relevant to what we're doing but everyone just gets together and it's like a creative like little corner that we can just you know work on our art with and have someone to talk to and just you know bounce ideas off of each other so those are very laid back those are very fun and we do those every um, last Thursday of the month. So that's going to be what we have going on on the 27th. That's the Relax in Color live stream. And again, we do these uh, every we do these every um, Thursday and we go live. They're free to watch, free to join. You can comment, you can uh, follow along with us as we do it. But we have these on the Facebook page, the Twitch and then the YouTube channel as well, too. So those are fun. Those are really cool to do. Uh, and also, too, let me go ahead and leave. Let me leave this um, coupon code in the chat for you guys. So I'm going to bring y'all a little closer to me. Don't mind my messy background. I'm in my studio. So, you know, hard at work over here. Okay, so this code right here is going to get you 15% off. And that's active for the next 24 hours. Okay. All right. Yep, I have that in the chat box for you guys. So you can reference that and you can take advantage of that if you want to as well too. So let me just fix you guys back. Perfect, okay. So I have all of these here and my glue gun is just like, puddling up glue so I'm gonna go ahead and start gluing these well actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my pencil that I have and again I have these laying horizontally I'm just gonna take them and start rolling them and just enough to get that impression like a natural kind of curl going with it and I'm gonna do that for all of these and that's going to help make it look more like a rose petal make it look more natural looking and the fun thing about these are, is, is that, you know, like I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of room for error. So you don't have to worry about making it look like the perfect rose. You don't have to worry about getting anything um, completely perfect with it. You can add as many petals as you like. You can make it smaller. You can make it larger. I've seen people do flowers like this out of this kind of paper that are just like, you know, huge. Um, obviously, we're not doing that because these rolls are really small, but, you know, it could be done if you're feeling ambitious enough. So I'm just taking that. And I'm again, I have these. I'm not, you can do it vertically, but I feel like it looks more organic if you have it horizontally. So I just have them horizontal and I'm taking my pencil and I'm rolling those just to get that natural sort of impression on them. And that's what's really going to make it look like a flower petal. And once we have all these steps done, it's just going to be arranging and gluing it at that point. So you do have to work a little quickly on that part, but it's, you know, nothing terribly, uh, nothing with terrible pressure. Okay, so I'm just taking, I have my center one that I made already. I'm going to take the petals and at the part where I rolled it, I'm just going to take them and just sort of start to arrange them around it, you know, begin to make... The look of a flower okay and once I have that in the position that I want it to be in I'm just gonna take some glue and just put a dab of that on there and roll that into place 
careful with the glue because it does burn. <laughs> uh, it's not awful, you know, but it it burns, that's for sure. So, and the paper's thin too, so, you know, you'll feel it through there. But again, you know, the things we do for our crafts. So I'm going to take again another petal, add some glue to the edge of it, and then I'm going to just wrap it around the flower that I'm making. And as you do this, you'll get these little like glue strings. You can just take those and roll them and then, you know, throw them off to the side, throw them at your friend or something or whoever's in the room with you. So you can take that and I'm just sort of flipping these down once I have them glued on. And you can already see how it's starting to turn into like the shape of a flower. And is my camera focused? Okay. Should be. So you can see that right there. So you're just going to build onto that with what you have. And you can pre-cut these like I did, or you can just cut them as you go. I find it a little quicker to pre-cut them just because you have them all lined up and then you can kind of play around with how you want to lay them on the actual flower as you build it. Whereas if you cut them as you go, you have to stop and then, you know, pick up again and stop and pick up again. And it's just a little um, more time consuming, in my opinion. Now, this part right here, the bottom of it, I'm just taking it and I'm pinching it because what we're going to do is when we make the chandelier, we're going to add them to the chandelier. They're going to be kind of like dangling downwards on there and arranged in different positions. Now, if you're just making the flowers on their own, you can definitely use uh, like floral wire. You could use if you have just wire laying around as well too. And you can actually build a stem and make them like that. You can even make a stem out of uh, the crepe paper as well too if you wrap it up enough and, and roll it. And I'll show you how to do that also. So that way, if you wanna take that route, you can do that too. So there are there's a, a number of options that you can do when it comes to making stuff like this. You don't have to go directly, you know, by the books. And you can see how it's just starting to really look like a rose now. And these are super simple to make, guys, I promise you. Um, they're fun too, just kind of like sitting here and building these little flowers. I've seen people make just like walls of these and they're not time consuming, terribly time consuming, but to make like an entire wall of these, you know, you definitely want to put away an afternoon at least, you know, maybe have some friends help you or something. But if we're just making a few, you know, it's definitely a fun little project you can take on at home, maybe with the kids or with family or friends. And I'm just taking the glue and lining that along the entire bottom of it. And you can see it's getting like more full. It's looking really cute too. And I'm just building around it as I go. You know, however you, it's, it's a bit aesthetic at this point, you know, just making it look how you prefer it to look. Like I mentioned, you don't have to make it exactly perfect. Again, it's a flower, so not every flower looks the same. And it's okay if there's a little, you know, if it's a little different. <laughs> So I'm taking that and I have almost all my petal. I've used almost all my petals for this one and that's okay. You want to make sure that you do have extra glue sticks on standby because if you've ever worked with glue guns before, you know how if you just have them sitting there, it kind of just like drains out all your glue. It's a little frustrating, honestly, but if you have one on standby, that makes it easier to just replenish it and you know keep going with what I with what it is that you're doing you don't have to stop and you know pick up again so I have my last petal here and I'm just taking that again and gluing that around the edge and on the bottom of this you can see that I just kind of made it into the shape of like a cone so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add more petals. I'm going to also push these petals downwards a bit to kind of conceal that. Because I don't want it to look like a, you know, exact triangle or anything. But look at that. We have a little flower now. Isn't that pretty? 
Okay. So we have our little flower. This is the first one I made. So, and you know, you can again put them together, make different bouquets, and just do a lot of fun stuff with them. So these will be really pretty for whenever we do the, or whenever we add them to the chandeliers next week. So I'm gonna make another one of these in, the, in a different color, just to kind of go over that again with you guys. And then I'm gonna move on to some of the other uh, shapes that we have here. Okay. So hmm, let's do, let's do, let's do orange. Okay. It says gold, but it looks orange to me. So, you know, again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to take a strip of this and I'm going to do it about two, two and a half inches. It's okay if it's not exactly the same. Don't worry about getting it exactly perfect. So I'm just taking those and I'm going to pre-cut some of those as well too. So one of the really cool things about um, working with Brittany in her company, Pop Chef America, is that I'm always doing these crafts that I wouldn't have necessarily done had I not began working with her. And I think that's really cool because I've been an artist um, my entire life. You know, I've been a painter and uh, I draw, but... As far as crafting goes, it's definitely a different field as opposed to, you know, more traditional artwork. So I'm getting exposed to a lot of really cool techniques and elements and just projects that I wouldn't have necessarily maybe tried out, you know, otherwise. And I just love that because uh, I have, I've played around with a lot of cool things now and I like that. I did, um, I've done a lot of wood burning with her that's been fun so we have wood burning kits too um wood burning uh candle making soap making uh bath salt making all of those things that you know i wouldn't have seen myself doing prior that i've done now and they're really they're really cool it's definitely a more i'd say almost meditative experience when you are crafting definitely a little less pressure as opposed to doing, you know, a painting or something like that. But it's really cool. Um, and I've enjoyed it a lot, you know, just doing things like this, especially since this one here, uh, Pajaki Chandeliers, I actually had never heard of them before, uh, before Brittany introduced me to them. So things like that uh, really can help strengthen and broaden your creative space like the, your creative vision if you do find yourself a little maybe stuck or just unsure about what you want to do you know maybe you're a fellow artist or you're just a, someone who loves to craft and create and you're wondering oh you know I've kind of done the same thing I want to try something else new out uh, shop her shop right here is a really good option to do that because there there's a ton of just different kits and things you can try out and all of them are beginner friendly because to be completely transparent with you guys, a lot of these I had never done before in my life, like I mentioned, until it was time for me to do them. So that within itself would make me a beginner at the project. And I've been able to pull them off um, and enjoy them too. So if you ever find yourself, well, maybe again, like a little intimidated or worried or just, you know, looking at something and you're like, oh, I don't think I could do that. Um, all of the kits here are very beginner friendly. So don't feel any, um, I guess don't feel any reservations in regards to that too. A lot of them as well are fine for children to do with you if you follow along with them. You know, of course, supervision, you want to make sure that you're helping them out because certain kits do require uh, things like heat or, you know, microwaving stuff. So you want to make sure that you have um, yourself present when they when they are using it if you do decide to uh, do something like this with your kids so again I'm just taking these little squares that I cut out and I'm just rounding the edges of them to make them like petals and this is going to be a lot easier I want to actually start to build the flower itself and there's not really a, a distinct number that you need for these I don't even know how many I cut so four, five, six, seven, 
18. So yeah, this one has like about 18 squares. You could do more, you could do less. Um, of course, the more you add up to a certain point, you know, would probably make it look a little better. But that's completely up to you, however large you want to make your flower. Or if you're actually following along with a real flower, that's, you know, completely um, objective in that, at that point. So... I'm just rounding these. This is pretty easy to clean up after, although I will say there's a lot of like scraps just, you know, laying around. So, you know, maybe sweep those away or just have like a little designated spot to put everything at. I'm super messy, so I'm just like, just kind of pushing them off the table as I go because it's just paper, you know. But if you're um, a little more particular about keeping your space tidy, then you know, I'd say maybe have like a trash bag or you could even take some tape and just roll a lint roller or something and just like tape them all up at the end to pick them away. But it's just paper, so it's really simple to clean up. I would say definitely be mindful of the glue gun though, wherever you place it at, because I have a bunch of little hot glue gun beads that are just collecting on my table right here. So definitely be mindful of that. If you are working on a surface, you wanna make sure that you have uh, maybe like a mat or a cloth or something down that you don't mind if the if the if the glue gets onto it. So just FYI on that. <clears throat> After you have all of your corners rounded on these, you're gonna again go in with like a pencil, a pen or something. I have them horizontal. I'm laying the pencil in the middle and then I'm just rolling it to get that impression and moving on to the next one. Again, you can do this step with, you can just roll it with your fingers, but I find that it's a little easier with a pencil because it gets that exact, you know, sort of like coil that like the flower petals tend to have. So that's just personally what I, I find a little easier when, when doing these guys. Plus, you know, it gets them a little more uniform too in shape as well. So just gonna go through and some of these are different sizes than others that's okay like I mentioned earlier it's okay if they're different sizes they don't have to be the exact same size it actually adds a little bit of variety to your flower makes it look a little more organic so I kind of enjoy that a little more too and we're just gonna go through and roll all of these up okay all right so it's like it's mid or it's technically nighttime Thursday and it's the end of the day I don't know about you guys but I definitely start to get tired around this time of day and I'm like in need of some caffeine usually I have like my tea my green tea or I have um, like some coffee or something on standby like right beside here but again, like I mentioned, I was I was rushing um, to get my my computer back up, like lo on the login screen, because I I was charging it, and then when I plugged it in, I went on the website and it just like immediately logged me off, and I had I had three minutes to get on here and get logged in and start the live. Um, otherwise, it would have you know just kind of put everything off track. So. I was rushing <laughs> and in the midst of me rushing, I didn't get a chance to grab anything to drink. So I'm over here just like thinking about, you know, oh my God, am I going to drink some tea? Am I going to drink some coffee <laughs> whenever I get done with this? I don't know about you guys, but I love um, iced coffee. I love iced coffee. I love, uh, I love iced tea too, you know, like a green tea. So that's kind of right up my alley. So I'm daydreaming about that right now <laughs> as I roll these petals and, you know, build these little flowers here with you guys tonight. So I don't know. It's the little things like that that kind of make me uh, make me happy. So I have this here and I'm on my last petal rolling that. All right. So now I'm going to grab one of these. I'm probably going to take one of the longer ones, honestly. Yeah. And I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to make the center of it first. So again, with that, what you want to do is you want to take it and sort of roll it into the bottom. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm just, I have it like pinched in the corner right here. And I'm going to roll it like so. And 
that's going to make the the center uh, center petal like that. And I'm just going to add some glue right here to keep it put together as well. So just going to add a little dab of that and then seal it. And then now that I have that part added, I can go ahead and start to add the rest of the petals around it. And what I found um, to be easy, after you take your petal, you can kind of like crease it in the center a little bit to make it a little more organic. And I'm going to take some glue and just put it all along the bottom edge right there. And that makes it pretty simple because you can just take it and wrap it around the uh, center that you just made. Now when you first start to build it, you want to make sure that you have the, um, the edge collected and kind of pinched in. And as you build around it, it's going to open the edge up more and it's going to look a little more rounded as opposed to like so pointed. And essentially in this process, you just, again, you take them, you crease them, and then you add the glue on the bottom and you're just going to wrap that around it. And just layer it as you go. You can even take towards the end of it when you have your flower built. You can take some scissors and then kind of make like some snippets in the petals to make it look a little more realistic. I have just like, I just burned my finger so bad. <laughs> okay, it's got played off. All right, so taking this again, just creasing it, adding glue along the bottom, and then just placing it around there. Okay, you can use, um, if you're really sensitive to the heat, it's not that bad, honestly, I'm just being dramatic, but if you are really sensitive to heat, you can use like a thimble or you can have gloves or something just to protect your fingers as you work with it, but it's not too bad, honestly, I just like to be a little dramatic just for fun. So I'm going to take the glue and again, add that to the bottom of it and wrap it around. So... These are really straightforward, the roses. I feel these are probably like the second easiest ones to, to make when doing these little flowers. And again, just like peel them back as you go. Okay. So I'm just taking these. There you go. But yeah, this is like the second easiest one to make. The other one would be like these little carnations. Those are so simple. So I'll show you guys how to make those next. But really the only time consuming part about this is just cutting out the petals and then arranging them but it's not terribly time consuming i made the other one in what was it like 15 minutes maybe less 10 minutes so you can make a good amount of these in a pretty short amount of time and as i layer this i just kind of peel it back so it looks more organic and looks you know, like a rose. I know that's kind of hard to pick up on camera, but you get the idea of it. And that's what makes this simple is the shape is there. You just simply need to arrange it and kind of manipulate it a bit. And it looks like a rose, you know, just pretty fairly, uh, fairly, fairly forward on. So you can see that. And you can stop right there. You can keep adding them. Like I mentioned, this one here has about 18 petals. You don't have to put that many. You can put less if it looks good with less. If you feel like it needs a little more, add a little more. You know, it's just paper. So you have plenty of it. And again, I'm just laying that on there and I'm kind of folding it back. It's almost, almost like a simplified version of origami in a sense. So if you guys ever do that, then you'll be able to make these ooh, like a breeze. Okay, so I'm adding those on and then just layering it. And I'm gonna use all the petals on this one. I wanna see how it looks. Okay. <clears throat> so like I mentioned, they don't have to be the same size they could be different sizes just to add a little variety to it okay 
All right. You know, I always want to add music on these live streams, but when it comes to copywriting, I don't want to play around with that. <laughs> I've seen or I've had actually a lot of videos too that I've posted with music playing in the background. And, you know, it'll be something that um, I posted, for example, I posted a video maybe like six years ago, honestly. And I got a copyright strike barely this year. And I was like, what is this? Like, what video are they even talking about? And I go to look on it, and it's a video, and it's like a song playing on a radio in the background. So it wasn't even something that I had playing over the actual video itself. It was just, you know, just like a song in passing. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, really? So they don't play around, they don't play about those copyright strikes. They they will come for you, you know, if you don't use copyright free music or anything like that. I know YouTube has some um, some streams and channels that, that do play copyright free music. But like I mentioned, I was in a rush, scrambling to get this started. So I didn't get an opportunity to put on a playlist for you guys. So, you know, my apologies for that. Okay, so as you see, it's getting bigger and I'm just building it up and looks like an actual rose and just taking the petals and like folding it around it, creasing them in the centers and gluing it on there. All right, so <clears throat> when you do take a look at the Etsy page, there are, um, there are subscription boxes that you can sign up for. And with those, it's different uh, crafts that you can come along with and you know participate in. If you do sign up for the subscription subscription boxes, then you um, you get sent the kits that that we do on these live streams weekly. So that way you have all that at X, you know, in in your um at your disposal. <laughs> Sorry guys, lack of, lack of caffeine. <laughs> lack of caffeine is getting to me. Okay. It's been a busy week, you know, but busy's good. Busy's good. It's just a lack of caffeine right there. Okay, so again, too, like I mentioned, you could start taking your scissors and kind of, if you want to, like cutting, you know, like slight shapes into it or slight dips. If you have a petal that maybe looks a little too, you know, blunt, you can just round that off make it look a little more natural and just play around with that. We have a storm coming in Houston, I believe, or some, yeah, we have some heavy rain. So if you guys hear a lot of noise, my studio has a bunch of windows in it and the walls are pretty thin. So when it starts to rain, it's kind of noticeable. So if you hear some noises going on, that's probably what it is. So I'm just building this up. And I'm gonna add the last two petals at the end of it, or the bottom of it, I'm sorry. Just to help make it look a little more full and kind of, you know, cover up the, the tip of it. So that's how you make the roses. And like I mentioned, those are really straightforward. They're pretty simple to make and they're fun too, honestly, I, I like making these. So we have three right here. We have a little bouquet. Let's see if I can hold that up for you guys without spilling them. But yeah, so these are the roses and you can add stems to them if you like. If you just wanna have them, you know, on display like that, you can add a floral wire, you can add, you know, a stick or something, or you can make one too actually so if I had the green crepe paper here, I would use that. I don't, but if you have like, or with your paper, you know, you can take a, a strip of it like this, fold it. Of course, I would take like a longer strip with more, but fold it and then, you know, you can just like take it and roll it, roll it up and kind of like twist it like this. 
And since the paper is so thin, you can get it pretty fine as you twist it. And you can even make like a stem like that, you know, and just like add that to um, the, the base of your flower. Of course, when you do that, you want to make sure that you leave a little bit of paper exposed so that way you can glue that on there. And then I would probably take uh, some green and then add like um, leaves to it. I forgot the word for it. <laughs> and add like leaves to it. Okay, so we have the roses made. Uh, next one I'm going to show you is to make this guy right here, which, okay, this one right here, this one's super simple. So I'm going to make a pink one, and what I want to do for that is I'm going to take uh, a strip of this, and you want a pretty good size strip, because we're going to be folding this, and the more uh, folds we have in it, the more full it's going to look, so... You want to make sure you're working with a pretty decent amount. So I just rolled off some of this and, you know, that's kind of the size that I have to work with here. So I have that. I'm going to take that end to end. If I can untwist it. Okay. I'm going to take that end to end and like that. I'm going to fold it again. Crease that again, and I just folded it like three, four times, depending on how long I cut it. And we're going to do one more for good measure. Okay, so I have it folded into a little strip like this, and what I'm going to do is just take my scissors, and I'm not going to cut on the end like this because I don't want to cut it in half. But I'm going to take them and just start to like cut upwards into it. And I folded this pretty thick, so I'm going to have to make sure that I use like the base of the scissors. And I'm literally just cutting strips into it. I'm not cutting all the way through because again, if I cut all the way through, I'm, I'm going to cut it in half and just kind of like defeat the purpose. So I'm just cutting slits like this. And... You can make them thinner, you can make them thicker. I'm making them a little thinner, so that way there's more of them. But you just wanna make sure that you have them all at about an even length. And again, you don't wanna cut completely through into the paper because you will rip it in that case. So, I'm taking that. And one more, okay. So I have all of these slits cut right here. And next I'm going to take it. It's a little messy here. <laughs> so I'm going to take it and then just unfold it. So I'm unfolding this. Okay. And you want to be careful with this one because it is so thin, especially since we cut all the slits into it. It just makes it more at risk for ripping. If it rips, it's not the biggest deal. We can always glue it back together. But of course, you know, we want to make it as easy on ourselves as possible, right? You know, we don't want to add extra work. So I just unfolded it. It is still folded in one section. Now you can either leave it doubled up like this to make it a little more sturdy as you work with it, or you can completely unwrap it. I'm going to unwrap it because I feel like being chaotic tonight. So I'm going to unwrap this completely and okay, so we have this giant trail and this part right here, pretty much what you do, you want to lay it out and then you're just going to start to kind of roll it into itself. So I'm just taking it and at the base, I'm twisting it into itself. And as you do this, you're going to pinch in the base and you'll begin to uh, you'll begin to see the more you climb up it that you're sort of building kind of like a starburst looking flower. You know, it looks like a burst of stars. And as you go, I would recommend adding glue to help keep it in place because we are working with such a longer strip right here. You're going to have a lot of the... Um, the paper kind of just like at play right here. So as you roll it up, you can take some of them and begin to like kind of peel it back. So you can see how it's starting to make that kind of like starburst effect right there. And you're just gonna keep rolling 
Like I mentioned, this one is so simple to make. Um, I do want to say that as I roll, I kind of begin to climb down the base of it because I don't want it to be all bunched up at the top. I want to kind of have it spread out to make it look a little more natural and also to cover up the, um, the end of it as I go. So it's, it's going to end up being kind of wrapped into itself. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. And you can add a string of glue at the base and just work along that way or you can add little dots of glue. And as I go again, I'm just taking these uh, strips that I cut and kind of pulling them out. And this one here makes a very abstract, very, um, you know, kind of pointed looking flower. And I'm going to show you guys what you can do at the end too to kind of like customize it a bit. Or you can do it with this step here too. If you really wanted to take the time, you could actually take and like kind of point each of these little squares to make it more of like um, a petal shape. So that's something that you can absolutely do as well too if you don't like the, the square kind of tip on it. But again, this one is so straightforward. You just take it, roll it around, and I'm kind of regretting making it so long, but it's okay. <laughs> so I'm just taking it with the glue, rolling it into itself. And again, just arranging it as I go to make it look a little more appealing. And now this one, I will say, it does not come together fully until you, you get everything glued into place. So if you're doing this one and you're rolling it and you're like, oh my God, what am I making? That's okay. Like, that's normal. I thought the same thing. And then when I finished it, I was like, okay, it looks like a flower now. You know, it passes the flower test, right? So I will say this one in particular is the simplest to make of them, but it doesn't really come together until you have, you know, everything glued into place. But you know, it's so easy to make, so why not? And again, you can pull these back and arrange them as you glue, or you can, you know, kind of wait till everything is glued on at the end. I like to do a little bit of both just to kind of, you know, mess around with it and see what I like. So again, rolling it towards the end. And once you begin to get more into uh, the bulk of it, I'd say definitely make sure that you kind of pinch the bottom of it because this one, uh, it does get a little wider at the bottom. And you can always take some glue and hold that in to make it more um, aesthetic looking on the bottom of it. So just adding more glue along this base and rolling that. Now, for those who are just joining or who have joined, and I know there's a few who are coming on and off, these are going to be the flowers that um, we are going to be adding. This is a two-part segment. So the first, um, this is the first part of it. This, These are the uh, crepe paper flowers that we're going to be adding to the Pajaki chandeliers that we're going to be making next uh, week on live. So... Again, you can make as little or as many of these as you like because there also will be other decorations that we're going to add to the chandeliers themselves as well when we are making these. So I'm going to add just a little bit more to this one just because I want to kind of fix it up a bit because it looks a little crazy like I mentioned. So I take that and just roll it. Okay, so I have that. And now this is the part where you can take your scissors and you can start um, sort of like adjusting them. If there's any that are too long, you can cut those. You can shape them too. If you wanna make them a little more like a petal shape, you could take your scissors and just like cut the edges to make them less squared. So that's something that can help it look a little more like a carnation as well too. You don't have to do this step, but I think it makes it look a little nicer. And I'm just going around and just trimming it. You can do this before you roll it or you can do it after. It's completely um, up to you in preference. But you can see right there how we have that. And I'm going to take uh, some glue too and just going to take actually a strip of, let's see. I'm going to take some glue and just put it in the center and kind of just compress it. Because I, I do want this one to be a little more... Um, pointed at the bottom. 
just to keep it all together because there's so many parts of it. And I just put a dab of glue in the center and I'm just like squeezing it into it until it kind of dries a bit. And then I'll go back to kind of arranging the flowers, pulling them out some. The ones in the center, I do want those to be a little shorter than the ones on the outside. So I'm gonna take my scissors and kind of trim those in the center a bit more to make it look a little more natural. And the thing about this one is you can always add more to the edges. Same with this with the roses too, actually. If you, you get it all put together and you're like, hmm, it's not big enough or it's missing something, you can always take another strip of it and just kind of like add that around the edge too. And this one, you can make multicolor as well. So we're actually gonna take some of the yellow and rather than adding more pink, we're gonna add some yellow to that one. So I'm gonna take another strip of this, not too much of it this time. So a strip of that, and we're gonna do the same thing. And again, we just take a strip of it. We're going to fold it into itself, like so. Fold it again, and one more time for good measure. And then what we would do is we would just take this and again, make the same little cuts that we did the first time. And that's how you would add, you know, like a second layer. You would do the exact same technique. It's just in a different color. So if you want to make them like a rainbow carnation or, you know, like a pink and yellow, whatever you want to do to kind of customize your flowers a bit more. And again, when I'm done making the cuts, I just take them, I unroll them, and then I would just, again, add them around the edge of it, like so. I'm actually gonna do that to a portion of it, like that. And then just twist it around too. So, that's gonna add a little more color and depth to it as well. Now, since we are getting closer to the hour mark, I'm gonna show you guys quickly how to do the last one. So the last one is really similar to the rose in terms of technique. Um, it is a little, I guess a little more abstract almost. So I'm gonna take squares of this as well. I'm using orange this time. You can use any color you like. So I'm gonna take little squares of that and with these, I'm also going to do the exact same in regards to taking them and rounding them along the edges. So these are going to be pretty similar. Um, I do keep these a little smaller just because I want this one to look a little more petite, like a little tinier flower. But it's the same technique, uh, the first few steps of it, just like taking your squares, cutting the edges and rounding them like so. So if you're making the roses, you can also start off like you're making a rose and then you can end up making this one as well too. Now with this, the only major difference that I did, and I'll show you how I kind of started it off. I started it off roughly the same, taking one of these and kind of like folding it into itself However, with this, I do tend to press the petals inward a bit more, make them a little more rounded looking. I'm gonna take a little bit of glue and just like seal that off so I have a base to build off of. And with the petal, I don't know what that was. <laughs> with the petals around it, I'm going to take that and then sort of build that around really similar technique except this it's okay if it's a little more um organic looking a little less uniform i'm just taking these and kind of bending them and twisting them as i add it and adding glue 
along the bottom. I heard like a really loud bang outside, so I don't know if that was like thunder or what it was, but that's why I made a face right now. In case you guys didn't hear what I heard. I'm not just making crazy faces for the fun of it, I promise. I heard something. Okay, so I'm definitely gonna add more petals to this one and repeat the same technique pretty much. And when you're done with it, you'll get something that looks like that. And using these techniques, you can make all these little flowers that we made tonight. And you can add those, if I can hold them all, <laughs> you can add those to the chandelier that we're gonna be making uh, next week. So these are really simple, really fun to make. As you see right now, within the hour, I was able to make a handful of these. So they're just really, um, really relaxing too, honestly. I'm kind of just sitting here feeling super zen, making flowers with you guys. So it's, it's a fun thing to do. Um, one last time before we do go though, I want to say that we have these every Thursday. So every Thursday we do these, they're absolutely free to watch. They're free to join and you can watch them on the, uh, if you want to join the Facebook page, it's, um, craft, it's pop shop America is the actual page of it, but craft with us is going to be the, uh, root page of it. Let's see. And so you can join that and take a look at that one we post on that it's crap with us let's craft together yeah let's craft together that's the facebook group page and we post these on the group page you can check us out on the youtube channel uh, pop shop america and Brittany has a ton of pre-recorded videos that she uploads on there of her actually doing walkthroughs of a lot of these crafts as well you can rewatch the playback of this live on there too. So if you missed it or you, you know, you're in the middle of something, you want to catch the playback, you can check that out on YouTube also. And you know, that's really helpful if you're the kind of learner who likes to just watch someone do something before you actually do it. So definitely recommend checking that out. Um, again, every Thursday we do these, we go live, we have different uh, subjects that we cover. So, you know, like an example, this month we're doing the chandeliers, we did the, the flower making, we have vision boards, and then every last Thursday we have the coloring. So it's something different um, every Thursday that we do. Definitely recommend checking them out if you're um, into art, into crafts, if you uh, follow along on the blog already that Brittany has, then this is, you know, a good visual representation of what of you of what you'll be doing if you're subscribed to the um, boxes as well too. Uh, one last time too, I want to mention the coupon code. It's Craft with Alex. I left that in the chat box. That's going to be active for the next 24 hours. So um, until tomorrow until 7 p.m. That's when you'll be able to use that code, and that's going to save you 15% off anything on the Etsy page. So definitely take advantage of that. It does not have to be the um, Pajaki chandelier boxes. It could be anything else that you see on there that you like. If you want to get into soap making, candle making, um, wood burning, if you want to get into the coloring books, whatever it is that you uh, find interest in, you can use that code for as well. So take a look at that, see what they have. Again, every Thursday we do these live. Um, I am approaching the end of my hour here with you guys. So... As usual, it's been great. Uh, I love doing these lives with you guys. I love seeing people follow along and chime in and make their own little crafts as well, too. So it's always a good time with you guys. But with that being said, I am going to uh, grab some coffee and I will see you guys next week. Okay, you have a great Thursday. Enjoy your weekends. Have a safe one, guys. Bye.